Today I'm going to be making a little table. A little table for my 8mm movie film splicer and projector and so forth. It's nothing fancy. It's just a little homemade table so I can do my uh, splicing and so forth because it's difficult to do it on the kitchen table and um, with the outrageous prices of having movie film converted to video which I cannot afford um, I'm gonna have to try to do it myself poor eyesight and all um, got 8 millimeter super 8 millimeter films that uh, need splicing and the projectors don't work good and I'm gonna have to try to do the best I can so to start off I've been putting this thing off for a few years now, <clears throat> so I'm going to have to make the table and then I'm going to proceed to um, get the um, films done because uh, these films are old and I'm going to have to try to get some of them onto video. Over here I have some wood left over from the porch project and also some 2x4s here that are also left over from the porch project. These are 24 inches so the table's going to be 24 inches wide because this plywood here is exactly 12. This was cut at home by Home Depot. I had this section cut off because I needed 36 inches for the side of the um, you know for the enclosure of the porch so this left me a 12 foot by 8 foot piece of quarter inch plywood so I'm going to use that for the top and I'm just going to put them together and here is another piece here so what I'm going to do cut this right down the middle this will give me 31 inches 31 inch long table by 24 wide that should give me enough room to have all my equipment on it so I better get started right now What I'm going to do first is I'm going to miter these corners right here. I'll show a little bit of the miter cutting here.
Okay, I've got the miter cut, so I've got to put it together. I've got to pre-drill it and nail it together. And then the plywood will go on top of that, and I'll put a uh, piece down the middle to support the two pieces when I piece the, ply the quarter-inch plywood together in the middle there. Okay, it's the best I can do. It squares up pretty good. Now if you look over here, you notice how this moves when I nail it down. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. Well, anyways, that's the best I can do. I mean, I'll just take a wood rasp and knock that off. Because these things shift when you hammer them in, you know. And even though I got a nail in here, I don't even know if I'm in the camera or not. I probably am not even in the camera. But even though I got a nail in here, it, uh, I can't knock that straight. So I'll just take a wood rasp and knock it off. This is not furniture. Uh, making as I told you so many times and this is why I'm not a carpenter just take off the ends with a wood rasp Yeah, it don't look too bad. Okay, what I got to do is to make a centerpiece, a support, and uh, nail these two pieces on here. I'm going to put this 1x3 in there instead of uh, wasting any more 2x4s because I need some for the legs. Um, I'm going to put this in there and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it on the underside of the seam of the two pieces of plywood. I'm going to nail it and glue it in place and then I'm going to put the whole, both pieces of plywood down at the same time. So what I have to do is to cut this to the length of the inside dimension, lengthwise dimension, of the box. I got it marked now I'm ready to uh, glue it in there uh, and put some small brads in there. I used to have a brad nailer. I had about three of them and every damn one of them different brands jam up. 
because I have a problem with uh, small nails bending over on me. But uh, brad nails ain't worth the powder to blow them to hell because every damn one I've ever had always jammed up on me. So we'll do it by hand. What I got to do is put a little blocking on each end to level it off, put some glue on end and tack it. These are only like half inch little tiny tiny brads because the next size up I have is an inch and a half finished nails and obviously I don't want it to come through the one by three pine. So I'll glue that up and come back on this video when, when I'm done with that. I'll take you over here and show you what I did. Uh, See the pieces are uh, seamed together with the uh, one by three pine in the middle and that will be dropped into the frame. When it's in the frame it's an inch and a half from here, an inch and a half on the bottom. And this will sit right up in there. What I'm going to do now is to drop it into place and I'll uh, show you what it looks like. Nail this up. Nail this 
something, sand it, put some legs on it. I we use an inch and a half finish nails. The damn nails got a little rusty, even though I got them in a container with a plastic cover on them, being in the shed and everything. bang them in slower bend the damn things over every time because we're going in we're using quarter inch plywood and going into the two by fours so the nails are really a little longer than they need to be but to give you an idea I'll come back on this video in a little while these nails are as rusty as a old goat that's been stuck in the sewer here better but I ain't gonna go out and buy new nails. The whole, uh, the whole can got rusty on me here. Not real bad. Some of them are worse than others. As you can see here. But uh, that's just the way it is. That's just the way things happen sometimes, you know. You said so many times. It'll only be used it's a work table, basically. I could have used a card table. That's too flimsy. Right. I don't think the looks of that nail is too close to the edge. You gotta get this nail out of here. They're too damn close to the end. Damn close to the end. Because I got a quarter inch overhang here, so. Put it right here. That's why I'm not a carpenter or a cabinet maker. We'll just put wood filler in there. That's all. Good old wood filler will do it. nails in here, but galvanized finish nails of this size bends over a lot easier. I think there's less steel in them. To keep the diameter the same, they have less steel in the uh, in this size or any size nail uh, because they got to keep the diameter the same. So, uh, you know, so they, when they put the galvanizing on, the diameter is the same, so they have to take off something, so they take off the metal. So these nails would bend over if these were galvanized. They'd bend over every damn time. That's the way I sight. Hard for me to hit the nail straight on, and that's why I bend a lot of times. Put one over here. All right, I just flipped the rover. You can sh I'll show you what it looks like. There's the uh, support in the middle. Top. A quarter inch overhang on the two ends. This wood was cut, as I said, by Home Depot, so it's cut size. I try to cut it with a skill saw, it won't be as precise as this. Now, now what I'm going to do here, I don't have enough wood to make four legs the way I want to make it. So we're going to make a piece coming out here underneath, coming down, and then there's going to be a cross piece on the bottom. So that'll be like It'll have two supports and a cross piece on the bottom. I'm going to get some wood together and we'll be back on this video when I'm ready.
Now I'm going to put my uh, I'm going to put my camera on, Tommy's recording, and I'm recording. Sometimes I can't always get at the camera and take the time to stop and record. So, we're just making up the legs now. Now we're going to do the legs a little different than the conventional style here. Because we don't have enough wood to work with, we're going to use this method here. Okay, we're at the next day of this project because uh, it started to rain in the afternoon all of a sudden here. I'm commencing to make the um, two legs and the way I'm going to do it is this is going to go up underneath. There's going to be two of these, one on each end. Then there's going to be a foot on the bottom of these going across like this. I'm going to make them out of the pine. That way I can cut them with the scroll saw, the um, saber saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these so I can get four pieces. So I can put a piece across here and on the back side. And so there will be two on each one of these on the bottom. I'll show you in a minute. Now I gotta cut two more like this here. And I'll show you how they're gonna go on. So they're gonna go on just like you see them here. The only difference is I'm gonna do some trimming on them. And do a little scrolling on the bottom so that uh, it'll look a little better. It'll be scrolls, something like this. So that to be little feet. In other words, instead of having a piece going straight across onto the floor, because this is going to be used in the house, and then it'll be brought back outside when I don't need it anymore um, to do my uh, movie film. Uh, splicing and so forth. So uh, we're going to just take the uh, saber saw and we'll, we'll make a pattern and I'll trim those down. And each one of these here that you see laying down here will be the uh, supports for the table. And it's um, not a piece of furniture, but uh, it's not meant to be left in the house anyways. As you can see, I just take my uh, little protractor, I guess you call it. This used to be Tommy's when he was a little kid. And uh, just draw the circle here, drew the circle over here. And what I'll simply do is I'll cut this out and then I'll make patterns off of that to do the rest of these. Now on the bottom here, I'm going to have to draw a pattern to come up like this so that this part here becomes a foot and this does not contact the floor at all. So I just go like that and come down. Now I was going to use 2x4s to do this but the reason I didn't is simply because 2x4s would be too hard to uh, cut with the grain. It's very hard on, the, on a saber saw to, to get a good cut, whereas this here would work out quite well, and I do one at a time. Okay, I had to make several tries here. We're going to cut on this line here, so it'll give me some uh, foot uh, area here. Um, so we're going to cut this off. We're going to cut this out in the middle here. 
and uh, this way this will make contact to the floor and this will make contact to the floor and then once I cut this out then we'll make the patterns to do all the rest um, I could make it fancier but for what only a table just a work table and nothing more as I had mentioned in the earlier part of this video I'm not able to record every single thing I do Tommy's not here right now and he usually uses his camera too so you might notice the difference in the quality of the video anyways this is uh, what I started here it's very hard with my eyesight to see the blade I can see the line but when that blade is going up and down on that uh, saber saw there I can't always see uh, where I'm running it's tough when you got bad eyesight so we're gonna cut this out like this and then we're gonna cut this around and this around here and then we'll make templates and I gotta do three others oh my goodness gotta take two more three more of these things It's not too bad, I can sand that. Okay, now this enables me to make a, a pattern onto these three pieces here. So, when these go on, they'll go on like this. One on each side, it'll be one here, one underneath, like that. I could just use one, but I'm not going to do that because I think these would be stronger if I did it that way. And then uh, I might even, in between here and the other one that goes under here, I might even put something in this area here to uh, fill it in. A one and a half inch piece of stock or something to put in there and in here just to stabilize it so it doesn't break. It's pine so it could snap off here. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Well, as you can see, I've got the pieces all traced out here. And cut this off and try to cut that knot out of there, too. You can't help all the knots, you know. So, got my work cut out for me. It's not easy cutting this. The pine cut's easy, but it's doing this continuous run here very hard for me to stay on the line because I can't like I say I can't see the blade when it's going up and down so I can't tell if it's in the, on the line or over the line and most of the time it's over the line but it's it's not bad if it's over the line and you still can trim it off like I did here but if it cuts in too much into here then I'm screwed well I got all four of these things made up not perfect, but they come out pretty good. Not, not perfect. I don't have a drum sander either, by the way. But I'm not going to worry about it. It's only a table. So there'll be two of these for each... Uh, two by six here to go down in and then uh, what I'll do then is to put a piece of 
filler in here on each end only on the very ends okay what I got to do now is to I got them all measured out now and uh, marked properly so I'm going to commence to glue and nail these in one on this side I marked the insides by the squareness of this, not this, simply because this was not cut precise. So if you want the real precise uh, angle, we got to use the straight edge here. And what we're going to do first is, uh, first of all, put this one on. a little glue in there just tapping a few nails here and uh, we'll square it up and she's already lined up with the lines in there However we square this one, the second one will follow suit because we want to make sure that these feet land right on the flat surface here. So this one will be fastened down, the other one will be adjusted to this. So if this is not square, well the other one won't be. It's not rocket science. Bench isn't exactly uh, perfectly level. Um, there's a little warp in it, but not too bad. It's been outside for many, many years. But anyway, we'll, we'll do the same here. And what we're going to do is take a piece of stock like this. I can see all four feet touching. Show you a little better over here. See, what we do is take a piece of stock, in this case the other leg, and uh, then make sure that they all are touching. And as you can see over here, the lines I got here, see how those lines, they, they got to line up. Okay, and when it lines up, and then it's right up against there and up there, and the bottom is in. We nail it and we're good to go. As you can see, we're sitting flush on all fours. All right, as you can see, I got them both made here. And uh, what I'm going to do is bring the tabletop over now. And uh, 
we're going to put the uh, legs onto the tabletop using three and a half inch carriage bolts. It'll be like this here. I don't want to put them both in place now. They'll end up falling over and uh, they're not, the glue isn't dry yet, so I don't want them to get knocked out of whack here. I'm going to put carriage bolts right over into here. So I'm going to pre-drill for the carriage bolts to line it up right now. Use a block. Use a block for the, uh, the actual measurement. Put the carriage bolts. Drill through for the carriage bolts right here. That way we're not too close to the uh, edge of the 2 by Okay, I got the holes drilled, but before I can even mount these, I have to make those little block things I was telling you about in this area here. I got to do here. This is a piece of two by four, so we need an inch and a half stock in here. So we're going to put that through. I'm trying to hold this camera and do it too. It's impossible. This is, you get the idea anyways. I do. Okay, what I'm going to do is cut this, mark this, cut this with a saber saw. And it's going to be hard because it's an inch and a half thick, so the blade is, has a tendency to bend like this. But this will enable me to give me a good foot here. See? rather than to leave it open like this here because that these could be prone to breaking off but once it's this is in there and glued in nailed in be fine so I'm going to make four of these things up As you can see, it's not a perfect cut because it's very hard to get this. So I'll take a, my rat tail file. I got a real rough rat tail file and I'll just round that off in there. And uh, the outside isn't too bad. This is only going to get painted. This isn't going to get stained or anything like that. Now, one last piece. Well, there she be. Now, these legs can be adjusted in case it doesn't sit level on the floor. There's only two bolts in here. So 
so I could loosen these right now it's square but in the event that for some reason something's off a little bit here which wouldn't surprise me the way I build things sometimes I can always adjust it you can loosen these and these can move like an eighth of an inch either way like this you know so right now we got it secured and we're ready to give it a try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off and I'm going to bring it up onto the deck over here. See what it looks like. Here we go. This is a big ass table. I didn't expect it to be this big and clumsy. table I had and I got rid of uh, several months ago. A little metal folding projection table. It was way too small to do anything and it was very flimsy. This here will allow me to do a lot of, a lot of work on it. Well, I wouldn't necessarily want to sit on it because of the way the legs are made here but well, that finishes the project. The only thing I got to do now is to sand it and paint it. And that doesn't have to be on video. Well, this will enable me now to do what I've been trying to do for a few years now, and that's to get some of these Super 8 millimeter films repaired. And that table will enable me to do that. I bring it into the house. It's a little bit big and clumsy, uh, but the legs do come off for storage if I have to but anyways thank you for watching whatever it is you do keep on doing it because whatever you're doing must be right thank you for watching good day worked on that project today making that table and now I have my coffee